Most journeys begin with a single step. Mine started at the age of five with a single note and would take me from my family garage in Olathe, Kansas to a theater on the Las Vegas Strip. I began playing on a 100-year-old upright piano that my dad bought from a farm family for $25. The piano was so big that it wouldn't fit through the door of our house, so I played on the piano in the garage. Many young children create an invisible friend for company, and I had one too, but he wasn't imaginary, he was real, and he had an incredible life-changing impact on a little boy who ended up becoming a professional musician and a showman. One Sunday evening in 1970, Liberace appeared to me, but it was in a television special, and I was mesmerized by those hands that moved fast as lightning on the piano and how every song had a happy sound that made everybody smile. The next day after kindergarten, I carried the suitcase record player from my bedroom to the garage. I found the only Liberace record that we had in a stack of polka and country music records my grandma Winters had given to us. I would listen closely to a song and then try to play it. Pretending I could play just like Liberace, I listened, studied, and practiced in this manner four to five hours a day for the next seven years. It was as if Liberace was sitting on the piano bench right beside me becoming my piano teacher. Disobeying my mom and dad, I rode my bicycle for miles over highways and busy roads to a store across town to buy more Liberace albums. I also cut the fingertips out of a pair of gloves to keep my hands warm while practicing in that garage during those cold winters in Kansas. Basically, I taught myself to play the piano and to this day still play by ear and don't read music at all. Through recordings and television appearances, along with his brilliance as a pianist and a showman, Liberace's joyful, generous personality helped mold me into the performer I've become today. With Liberace's mystical influence, I've entertained audiences my entire life. From family gatherings, grade school programs, choirs, and countless theater productions, my abilities in showmanship continued to grow. Performing nightclub and lounge acts, and as a headliner throughout the U.S. and around the world, my career could have only led to one place, the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas. In February 2003, Having lived in Las Vegas only a few days, I received a phone call from the Liberace Foundation with a personal invitation to enter the Liberace play -like competition. After telling them no thank you, they continued calling for the next two weeks. I finally admitted to them that I was terrified the other contestants would be trained classical pianists and I was afraid I would look like a yokel from the Midwest who couldn't even read music. Then, a voice in the back of my mind told me to accept the invitation. Maybe it was that voice from the invisible piano teacher in the garage. Arriving the day of the contest, my worst fear came true. All the other contestants were classically trained pianists, so putting us in alphabetical order to perform, I, West Winters, was last. Each virtuoso was more brilliant than the next, playing some of the most beautiful classical music ever written. When they called my name, that voice in the back of my mind said, Wes, fall back on what you know how to do best. So I began by singing and playing this foot-stomping, head-banging version of Going to Kansas City and ended with the Liberace novelty piece, Bumble Boogie. I finished the contest with the audience making it very clear who had won. <laughs> Me! Winning the contest sparked the idea to create an original show I titled A Musical Tribute to Liberace. Producing and starring in it myself, it ran at the Liberace Museum from October 15, 2003 to June 11, 2008. It became such a successful and popular asset to the museum, the showroom was named the West Winter Showroom at the Liberace Museum on August 2, 2007. So whether you see me as a tribute artist, my own performer, or that little boy from Kansas, I hope you enjoy the style of Las Vegas showmanship that I'm very proud to bring to you today. All the way from a garage in Olathe, Kansas, to a theater on the famous Las Vegas Strip, it really is an impossible dream.